I have got a lot to talk about, a lot on my mind. I'll probably forget half of it. So here we go. Um, I'm up early, as is the case when I go to a show or I play a show. I don't sleep well. It takes me a couple days to get uh, get it worked out. Went and saw the Melvins last night. Great show. Started off kind of tepid. Um, there was four bands. Um, they didn't announce the first band, so it was some band called um, Gay Something. It wasn't like Gay Bikers on Acid. That's an old band. I love that name. This first band, um, they were not good. I'm objective. You know, <clears throat> they're making noise, and they don't know what they're doing yet. It's terrible. I had to leave the club. Second band was Tweakbird. Now I've listened to Tweakbird online. It was kind of I kind of liked what they did online, so I was wanting to like it. Uh, they thrashed, but I think they had an off night, and I think it was partly the sound. Two people, drums and guitar. The sound, it didn't it didn't it didn't cr come across. They had vinyl. They had a really cool um, um, one of those colored vinyls with this streaky stuff that I was looking at. I, I wanted it, but not the music. So I didn't buy it. Big business, however. <laughs> Big business was the business. And um, I got this. They ran out of colored vinyl. Big deal, you know. And talking to the bass player, and that's where he's at. They sound the same. And I said, well, yeah, exactly. I got your music. The quadruple single. They rocked. That's kind of a cliche, but that's what they did. They stomped. They wailed. The bass player was a lot of fun to watch. And he played fuzz bass most of the night. He had those effects cranking. They were great. Big biz. Now this is an example of a band where maybe if I heard them, nowadays if I heard them, I wouldn't buy it. You know, I, I'd hear it and say, oh, that's all right. But if I see it, Okay, it makes all the difference. Seeing you do your thing makes all the difference for me. All the difference. So, um, Big Biz were great. And then um, Melvin's, I took a bunch of pictures. If I remember, I'll post some with the video there on my Facebook page. Some of them are. Melvin's, um, they're, the Melvin's know what they're doing. And the Melvins give you 158, 200% every time. Dale Crover, as a drummer, is amazing. You know, for a minute there, I was thinking that the Melvins had two drummers now because the music is so heavy that it's probably getting hard on Dale to, to pull it off. My God, he doesn't need another drummer. Matter of fact, you know, when I got to meet him and talk shop with him, you know, as well as let him know we have a friend in common, Tim, uh, Tim Moss. He and Buzz right away. They, you know, they're good friends with Tim. You know, and uh, Tim and I have some history, so that was real neat. You know, to to get simpatico right away. Hey, you know, we got a friend, Tim Moss. Oh, you know. <laughs> they didn't talk about you, Tim, but you guys are friends, and that was real neat to see. And so, yeah, I bought I bought the uh, the new one. And it was expensive. You don't get to see the record. You don't get to see what you buy. It's sealed. And it says right on the cover, random. You know, the vinyl contained in here is is a random, chose, randomly chosen, I think, of five different picture discs. And um, I, I, honestly, I wanted to buy multiple copies, but there were 40 bucks a piece. I can't do it, you know. I can barely do this. And um, my first listen um, is like the Melvins are subversive. Those guys, I love the Melvins, you know. They're always up to something, you know. And um, they do not play um, the uh, commercial game at all. They're, they're artists. They do exactly what the fuck they want. So this is the one I got. Just gorgeous. And the reason why I didn't buy two is because there's no way of knowing. And wouldn't it be my luck to get two of the same? I'm thinking all of them have this for the B side. I love that graphic. But this is badass, too. My friend Tim Guthrie, who brought over the Flaming Lips blood vinyl, was at the show, too. He doesn't particularly care for picture discs, but um, he went ahead and bought one, you know. 
as we talked, and I said, you know, if you don't, I don't think you know this about the Melvins. Their records don't, they don't stick around. It's like you don't just find Melvin's records very, very easily. So I have to get into this. The show was amazing. Trevor Dunn's bass playing on uh, upright bass. Whew. They don't need electric bass. It was heavier than electric bass. Man, he had that room rumbling. You know, awesome. Talked to him too. He remembered me. Of course, I guess I shouldn't be all that chuffed about it. Being a tall, bald-headed black man, I do tend to stand out at rock shows. <laughs> I also bought, the Melvins had, um, I couldn't afford all the vinyl. They had two 10 inches, um, 500 copies each, and um, silk screen covers. So I bought this one, 1983. This is some old Melvins. Dale, Buzz, and um, is this the original bass player? Mike Dillard. And... Um, the Melvins always give it to you. They're they're subversive. That's the word I want to use. Melvins know what they're up to, they're, but they're subversive. You know, they're definitely outside of the mainstream, which I love. So uh, check out the check out the vinyl. Now some could say that's like a three leaf clover, but no, that's a dick and balls. Okay, come on, you know. If you know the Melvins, if you know if you know anything about the Melvins, then you know. That's supposed to be a dick and balls, absolutely. Absolutely. Those guys are so twisted. I love it. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, um, shared the show with um, a couple of VC members, Dean Lundberg and Tim Guthrie was there. That was great. That was great. Um, I got some VC love uh, from a couple different people. Andy, thank you, uh, but I already had this, Sakamoto, so um, I'll be passing this on, and uh, the person I'm thinking of out loud, honestly, is I'm thinking of Sequoia Flame, seems like, David, let me know, you know, seems like you're getting into Sakamoto, and this is a 12 inch single he made with uh, Thomas Dolby, which is very good. The B-side is this ambient, minimalist piece that seems to do nothing. It's brilliant. It's very uh, Philip Glass, Terry Riley, the B-side of this. Amazing. Thank you, Andy. I already have this, though. I actually I have the 12-inch. I also have the, the, the CD single. <laughs> I got Sakamoto. I'd like some new Sakamoto. You don't see Sakamoto records. Now, thank you for sending me the dirt bombs. Now, I'm going to... Give you some honest feedback on here because, you know, you, my perspective on this type of thing is definitely different from you guys that like this stuff. So, you know, um, I don't. I could. I can do this, and this is not very good. Andy, thanks for the record, but this is really. Uh, and some of you guys that love this stuff are all up in arms now, but I'm telling you guys, I could. I can make a. Better Dirt Bombs record this morning. This is really um, nothing for me to listen to. Thanks again, Andy. Please let me just be honest about this because I really appreciate having this Dirt Bombs record. And I think I understand why you want me to have it. I think I do. But I also want to tell you something that I don't think you know that I think I need to tell you about this. You know, it, this is this rock and roll thing with the black guy singing. Well, you know, you know, it's nothing new, and um, I can do it better than this guy, and I don't even want to. I started listening to this, and it's like, oh, this is not even really very good. Thanks, Andy, but, you know, that's why I don't buy this stuff, because it's like, um, it's, uh, this guy is cool, okay? But I could, shit, I could do that. I could do this to death. I can dirt bomb his ass like nobody's business. And with some music that comes into play, it does. And it, it, it filters my experience of it. And so if I were to see the dirt bombs live, I'd cut loose and have a great time. Sitting to it at home, listening to it, it's like, I, I took it off. 
It's um, thank you, Andy. But I really think I have a point to make about this that I, that I don't. Maybe y'all don't understand. Maybe I didn't get it across right. Uh, that doesn't impress me. Okay, and I can, I can dirt bomb. I can out dirt bomb his whole band. <laughs> I can, you know. When it comes to the old rock and roll, you know, the original stuff, you know, I have respect for it. I still don't listen to it. You know what I'm saying? The stuff just bores me. Roots rock is just boring. You know, I just heard it too much. Okay. I got some more VC love from uh, Australia. A, a, a man named Dave who doesn't make videos, but he's an, he's older than me. He told me that. But he sent me records before. and He just sent me some amazing Australian records. And he sent me a package yesterday. Again, it's mind-blowing. For me, mind-blowing. For several reasons. One is the friendship that I feel, and Dave lets me know that he vibes with me, you know. He gets he's, he gets, he gets something out of watching the videos. He's bought my records, and he let me know Derek 2, like Derek 3. He loves it. Thank God. I mean, he really loves the music. Then, when he sends me these records, he always personalizes them. And, like, here, here's... This is just so special. So he sends me... Um, this um, Easy Beats, as you know, the uh, Easy Beats of uh, George Young is the older brother of the uh, Young Brothers in ACDC. But he sent this to me. Illustrates it. I love those uh, illustrations. Hello, Mr. D. Hey, Dave. And he gives me a little bit of info. The 45 was banned because it contained the word hell. Love those uh, drawings, Dave. Just wonderful. So I sent this to me, Pretty Girl, uh, Heaven and Hell by Easy Beats. Wow. He sent me another Master's Apprentices record. Um, I just really like the name of that band as well as I like the band. I'd still like to have an album. If I ever see one of their al albums, I'll buy it. Some records, for some reason, because of the way that they play in my history of seeing them throughout the years and wanting them and not w being able to get them, they're still like grails to me just for that reason. And Master's Apprentices albums are like that for me. I would really like to own one. Just like anything on the Regal Zonophone label. That label to me is just like this elusive thing. I've never been able to afford one when I saw one. I'll show the, 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 the single that blew me away the most last. This one is real cool. Linda Sue Dixon by the Detroit Wheels. And once again, look at that wonderful, thank you so much, Dave. Man, these are, the illustrations are priceless. And then again, he gives me the, the lowdown. This hit was a hit in 68. And sure enough, it's on there. He says here, he and his mates, it was the first time he ever heard the, fur, the F word on the Tally Ho record, and it's there. Thank you so much. Now, this is cool because I've heard several versions of this song. This must be the original. The Real Thing by Russell Morris. Monster Psych is right. He's absolutely, you're absolutely right, Dave. The ending, well, the whole song. But the ending of this is psychedelic as fuck. It keeps ending. You think it's over. It does, it's not over. Like you said, President of Australia speaking. Proud to say that this is the best ending I have ever heard on a psychedelic 45 record. I'd have to say that, you know, um, it's right up there. I can't think of one to compare it with, but this is really excellent. And the song, come see the real things, come see the real... I've seen, I've heard several people do that song. Awesome, Dave. My God. Awesome. Once again, not to... Um, I really appreciate this, Andy. I want you to understand, but you got to let me be honest about this stuff, okay? You know, there's no education in this. I know this stuff. I can do this better than him. No diss to him. I just, I want you all to know. You know what I'm saying? Everyone can educate everybody, but I do. I got something for you all. I got some education for you people, okay? This ain't nothing. Back in my early punk rock days and my early, uh, um, Elvis and his boss days, you know, 
we did the same thing the plasmatics did destroyed TVs on stage Norman and the Rockwells we had a big ten, uh, uh, t uh, uh, bowl full of uh, livers and we staged gutting um, someone um, uh, an audience member we staged it made it look like we gutted him and then threw the liver out in the audience freaked some people out thank you but I got this shit in my back pocket okay Um, Dave sent me a Golden Miles, beautiful song, Healing Force. Once again, I love singles. I love records from around the world. This it means so much to me. It's an Australian label I had never seen before. So I just love this. Healing Force. Another one, Parlophone. This is, this is like he describes it. The Throbs, mindless Neanderthal subhuman Australian. Awesome. It just boom, boom, rocks. The for And The Fortune Teller. I was listening to it and I'm saying, who did I hear this by? Big hit. But, but Black is an amazing psych masterpiece. I'm a very fortunate to have a very good copy. But, but you are fortunate, Dave, to have it. But thank you for this. Now, the one that blew me away, and this does blow me away still, because I, I was looking for the album forever. I found a French import. I'd love to get an original, but I still have it. But he sent me a Cybotron single. Wow. Made in 1979. Wow. Wow. Cybotron single. I don't know that I would have been able to get this any other way. And it's very cool. Electronic. Very cool. Cybotron, 7-inch single. I looked it up, and um, the A-side came out in a version with a different B-side in 1978. And this version came out in 1979. Now, there's two different covers. This one, and then there's one that has a white and blue background. I don't know which one is the first pressing. I'm just chuffed as hell to have one at all. Wow. Ride to Infinity, Cybotron. So Dave and Andy, thank you so much for the vinyl, the, the BC love. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of stuff um, going on in the community. The community is a very organic living thing. <clears throat> and some members have recently left. Jeff and then recently Teddy. And this is all I have to say is that they came for their reasons and they leave for their reasons, you know. And, um, you know, I'll say this. Uh, you know, I just reminded you, I just shared with you the book, The Four Agreements, about the way we do things. I really agree with that stuff. And Jeff came for his reasons and he left for his reasons. Teddy came for his reasons, he left for his reasons. Could those reasons have anything to do with me? They might. I don't know how, you know what I'm saying? The thing is, the, the Four Agreements book reminded me that we do what we do because of us, not because of you. If someone does something because of you, well, they're, you know, you're the, their, their focal point, but they're doing it for their own reasons. So uh, Teddy came when he wanted to, and he left when he wanted to. Our lives are better for it. So I don't see the need to do anything different because of what they did. I'm doing my thing. Last thing I'll share is, um, it's just a, it's a personal um, um, triumph. I get my records uh, pressed by Pirates Press here in America. They have a blog where they do records of the week and they show the cool fancy pressings and colored vinyl and splatter vinyl and special packages that they do for their different clients. I've done three records so far and I've hoped secretly that, well, Derek too, I was hoping, well, geez, Derek too really looks good. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll do that. Maybe I'll make a record of the week. I didn't, but in Dreama did this week on piratepress.com on their record of the week blog, we made among other albums, the record of the week and they show they show the cover and the vinyl, and I'm chuffed as hell. Chuffed. 
I've wanted that, you know. Um, I've got records tagged for the folks that have bought them already. And I don't know this, but this is why I think Indrema made it and Derek didn't. My Derek records are beautiful. They're, they're, the covers are very beautiful, but they're not rock and roll. They're not rock. The cover of Indrema is is more cool rock, you know. And I think that makes a difference. I, you know, I've, you know, I'm always studying. I don't know this. Someone's gonna say you don't know that, Derek. I disagree with you. I don't know. I'm just saying this is what it seems like. All right. For example, th this cover is beautiful. I mean, it's very eye catching, but it's not rock and roll. This is beautiful, but it's beautiful, ugly, and it's rock and roll. It's got, you see what I'm saying? You can almost see skeletons, you see faces, you know what I'm saying? It's got that rock and roll thing. It's cool. And so finally I made a record cool enough for Pirates Press to uh, acknowledge. I think my record looks too nice for them. It's not rock and roll. That's my perspective. Like I said, I don't know. But am I chuffed that they, that I made, that Indrema made their record of the week? Hell yes. And on top of it, Go look at it, PiratesPress.com, Record of the Week. They'll give a short description of the record, why it is they think it's a Record of the Week, and then they'll list below it, you know, who made the record. I'm really proud because it doesn't say Team Love. It says Derek Higgins because I'm the one that paid. I'm, I'm the one that paid the money. My name is on the bills. I'm very proud of that. Last thing, because this is long, and there continues to be the discussion about length of videos. I take the time when I want to to watch long videos, but mostly now I'm at the point where I have too much else to do that I would want to do to sit and watch a 20 to 28 minute video. I got to be in the mood. So what I... What is obvious is that there are people who want to watch me and they appreciate it when I stay on. So here's one for you. For those that don't have the time, well, you're not watching. So I guess saying sorry is a waste, but just, um, you know, yeah, the last thing I want to share is that I've started to make mixtapes. I started on SoundCloud. Now I'm on MixCloud. Now, I want to draw your attention to it because this is a way of me being DJ. I'd love to be a DJ. Uh, making mixes takes a while, and I could do a million different mixes. I've only got a few up. But it's a way of me playing records for you and playing songs and music that really means something to me. So I have four mixes up. One is of music by the vinyl community members, which I'm very proud of. It came out really well. And the other three are a mixture of music I just really like. If you have time and are interest, check it out. Okay? Thanks again, everyone, for everything.